the Batman. A lot of people in uh, the California area got to see it last night. And uh, I don't know any of these people, but uh, I have been doing this YouTube stuff for five years now. And people, you know, and I, I've, I've met some great people. and or I've never met them, though. But, like, virtually, like, Barry, you're one of them I, I, that I've become friends with virtually on uh, through Rebel Scum Podcast and Digital Charcuterie over the years. And so I got emails from people who were lucky enough to see the Batman movie in the theater and one thing i think everybody knows about me is i am I'm, I, I don't like the spoilers you need leaks and you need stuff to grow the viewers i understand that but usually when we do leaks and stuff we try to make it more playful and we talk about it here on the channel so none of what we're going to talk about is spoilers if you're worried about spoilers it's not spoilers but it is it's in it you know it's gonna it's gonna ruin rob's excitement of the movie because we're going to talk about it a little bit rob if you want to go just go i don't care <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, i'll don't stick go. around i'll stick around yeah. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna Lure stick around spoilers yeah. There. yeah so the first one is all spoilers and it's all about the joker being in the batman all right here I'm, don't mind me as i play with my batmobile <laughs> there we go i have check wait we're gonna play this game oh you got yours as well oh there you go <laughs> <laughs> wow. my, 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 mine are over there. <laughs> mine are there. Mine are there. And then, oh, uh, and then I got, and then I got my my pet, my Badinson Batman McFarland right there. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of them. Uh, anyway, whatever. We're going on to this right now. We're boring. Everybody wants to watch Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Now they're waiting for us to to talk. Rift tracks. First, so here are the three reviews that I got. Hi, James. Hello. Um, and I took out everyone's name. They all asked me not to put their name in. All of them asked me not to put their name in. Uh, hi, James. This is not the best Batman movie. It's the best comic book movie of all time. That's, high praise. Um, high praise. It, uh, we'll talk about that, maybe. Uh, hey, scumbags. That's what we call everyone at Rebel Scum Podcast. Hey, scumbags. Believe the reviews. I saw it last night, and I can tell you with the utmost sincerity that this is the film of the year. Pattinson is hands down the best Batman, and it's not even close. Saw the Batman last night, and I know you're pumped for it, but you're not ready. I don't know what that even means. That's very ominous, yeah. I know. All right, two more. <laughs> Hi, DC. Give Matt Reeves any franchise he wants. Holy cow, the Batman was a treat. I think it was a trip of a lifetime. The tree, it was a trio of a lifetime. Maybe that's a hint. I don't know. Spoilers. Uh, trio, trio of villains. <laughs> yeah, trio of villains. There you go. Trio of villains. James! That's how I'm going to read that one. Doctor Strange was my most anticipated film of the year, but now I don't know if it can possibly be as good as the Batman. The theater broke out in a thunderous applause when it wrapped. So those are the five. I've gotten six emails, but one of them I, I'm not going to post on here. But so those Spoiler are the five. Right? It's something. I'll tell you that it's something. It was. Uh, okay. It's a little bit more. It's it's way more. Specific. Yeah. It's. I'm not going to talk about it. I, I I mentioned it on um, on the Batman talk yesterday with Andrew. That one ended with the Joker. Ha ha ha. Um, which was it didn't say if the joker's in or not it just literally ended with joker ha 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 because we've been talking about the joker and and this person knows that the joker is uh the joker gets views is what this person knows <laughs> <laughs> it so was rad. it was it was mr rez's email <laughs> it's just a rant about how it's not as good as batman and robin because the argument is batman and robin's the best batman movie because batman and that batman movie is the only one that has a high credit score and can get a credit card. All the other Batmans, we don't know where he gets his money from. We don't know. But in Batman and Robin, he has, a, he has a good credit score. We know that. Um, that's where I'm going. Uh, but anyway, these are the reviews right now. I'll leave them on the screen for a little bit. Uh, these are the first three. So, uh, Rob, let's start with you. Your thoughts on these reviews. Do you First off, do you believe that these people even saw the movie? And so, does this, this amp you up anymore? Or does it make you say, eh? Or are you like, man, I wish I didn't read these? James, how dare you even incite that, you know, do you think these people even saw this movie? Our fans would never lie to us. Come on, James. Don't don't even think like that. So, yeah, it's it, to me like these these ones are very very interesting and I you know, most of the time I don't want to know like this type of stuff because I just want to especially on a movie that I'm extremely hyped for, I kind of want to stay away from it and I know I want to see it, so I want to 
just see it and experience it for myself. But like, you know, in a case of that third one that you have there on the top, the, the very ominous one, that's like saw the Batman last night. And I, and I know you're pumped for it, but you're not ready. Like that's like a perfect tease, like um, tease review for me. Like that's where I'm just like, okay. Like, you know, I don't want to overhype it for myself because like for me, the dark Knight's the best uh, uh, comic book movie ever made. And the fact that this thing can even compete with it has me very excited, but you know, at the same time, I'm worried that it can't match the excitement that I'm hearing from uh, some of these reviews. That's what, that's the only thing I really I agree with you. That's my, that's my one concern. And that's what I, I talked to Andrew Fantasia about this yesterday on the Batman chat is, we see the uncharted, right? The 39% critic, the 92% fan. We see the last Jedi, 90% critic, 40% fan, whatever it is, right? We see those discrepancies and it's like, well, wait a minute. If we are, if you go into uncharted and you're told it's the worst movie ever made, and then you like it, even if you like it just a little, even if you're like, well, that was fun. Because it's so low here, you're going to raise that bar, right? It's going to go up. And and conversely, on the other side, when critics are like, this is the greatest movie ever, if you watch it and you're like, well, that was good. It wasn't the best movie I ever saw. You're going to then maybe, and I'm, I'm saying you, the general you, right? It's Then you're going to put down, no, this movie is not what you think. And all of a sudden you're like, no, screw the critics. They're wrong. It's good. It's not great. And that's, and I'm, I, and I'm, I'm not worried, but I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to be the problem is, is these reviews influence us and they don't necessarily influence us in, Oh, this is a great movie. So then we all come out like, Oh yeah, that was a great movie, but it twists us. And we're like, no, 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 no. It wasn't that good. You guys, you guys were sold on something that wasn't there. Barry, you see the reviews. They're all very positive, except for that ominous one. We don't even know what that means. <laughs> right. That could be like, it was really bad. We know you're pumped for it, but it sucked. We, I actually, <laughs> there, there was a lot uh, anyway, but um, I, there was, I had a conversation with anyway. Uh, but Barry, you see these. What do you what do you make of them? I'm intrigued. I like that com the best comic book movie comment has got me thinking and the wheels turning. I'm thinking back to kind of uh, again. I'm going to go Marvel here. Uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. I'm like, are you telling me they made a live action version similar to that? Because that was phenomenal. And if that's the case, you've got me hooked and intrigued. Because I don't know if I'm going to go see the Batman right away. I may wait just because of my opinion on the Batman series in general. But now I'm intrigued <clears throat> in the fact that um, I'd also like to know whereabouts in California some of these people are. And uh, I'd be curious to know. I if think when it comes to Craig, they can invite you next time? <laughs> I'm in Washington. We pretend we're California. Uh, <laughs> well, and for me, I'm just thinking about it. It's like, hey, I was literally in California for five hours earlier this week. Why can't I just push it over and then just watch the movie with these people? That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm again. I'm kind of jaded for critics. I think I'm not a. Uh, I shouldn't say I'm not a fan of the critics. I understand their purpose and in, in the industry, but I think from just my viewing and my opinions on what I like, I've noticed is I'm going to go kind of more the fan base, and then I know the critics. If the critics and the fans are both saying, "Hey, this was awful," then it probably is. If there's a little leeway balance, I'll probably have to go see it for myself, and that would probably move me from the it's the greatest of all category times to it was a good movie. I enjoyed it. It was worth its money, but is it going to be long, you know, something we think about 10 years from now, 20 years from now. <clears throat> and then, you know, a conversation about the, was that movie you referenced William Defoe and, and um, Rob Patterson arguing at each other. Now the, I'm in the lighthouse, the lighthouse. The yeah. lighthouse. Yeah. I'm like, are you telling me that's what we got? Because that's what it's sounding like based upon these comments. The Patterson in that movie is very good. <laughs> I thought he was, uh, good and devil all the time. I didn't think he was great in that one. I thought he was great in the lighthouse though. The lighthouse. I thought he was, he, he wasn't nominated for best act, best supporting actor or whatever in that one, but both of them should have been there. They They're phenomenal in that movie e easily. I, when I look you're, at you're, li you're like me lobster, James, you're like <laughs> oh, me lobster. The, mer <laughs> the mermaid, the mermaid scene is weird. This, <laughs> this movie is, is it's, I, it's weird though, because it's like, if it's great, that's great. But does it live in the DC? Like, does it affect other DC movies? It's very strange, like that, where I don't think it does, and I don't think it's me it's not meant to. But it, it is kind of it's weird. It's great seeing that people are really enjoying it. For me, though, 
Barry, what you were saying about critics is I, there was a time when I, I think critics mattered. And that's when you had to open up the newspaper and then you would read the review and then you would decide whether or not you were going to call movie phone for the movie time in your, in your area. <laughs> now that's not a thing right now. It's like, well, I'm going to go on my phone. I'm going to buy my ticket. I'm going to pick my seat for the show or I'm going to wait for, for it to show up on digital and just rent it in like three months, two months, whatever it is. Like there's not much time. It's not the same era we're living in. And critics used to be, I don't know what they were. They were like film scholars or whatever who had, you know, their heads up their butts usually, but they were like people who really, who, who they didn't just enjoy a movie, but their whole purpose was to, to, to watch a movie and analyze a movie. Right. And I think the yep. analyzing of a movie is, has dissipated over time because of YouTube. Hi. Uh, and social media and all of a sudden critics aren't just critics anymore they're joe on, on i almost said joe blow but that's actually a page but, that. they're people, but there's you're just like guys in their mom's basement who are like i'm gonna go watch the batman and i didn't like the batman because of you know it's not it's like well that's just an opinion and i and crit, the job of a critic is not to be opinionated it's to be is to be more objectified by the movie and and bring out what worked and what didn't objectively, not subjectively. And I think that's something that's been lost a lot in, re in reviews and in critics of of movies. And that's because it's oversaturated and, and things like Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes, I just think, should die. Like, they should just crumble up and just disbar. Like, I just hate Rotten Tomatoes with a passion. It's like, you're like, I want to watch this movie. Well, I got 68% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, that's, who cares? <laughs> and they're like... That's a lot, man. That is seven out of ten people likes it. like shut up. Anyway, I hate Ryan Tomatoes with a passion. It's just it's ruined movies forever. Um, but I I, I, I I think the main reason with uh, issue with Ron Tomatoes is that the way some people just either put it on such a high pedestal or just you know don't don't seem to understand. The other ones that don't seem to understand how Ron Tomatoes works. How it's like you know it's not that you know. Uh, critics are giving this movie a 68% or if it has 99% on Rotten Tomatoes, it doesn't mean that it's it's 99% like, you know, that good of a movie. It's just that they like the movie like that. And I think that for me, the key thing is uh, when you have the certain amount of critics that you at least trust or, you know, you like hearing their opinions uh, of certain things of, or even ones that your general interests align with a little bit more that can help a lot too because i have a few ones that i look at like that too and like uh before like you know all the hype for a movie like coda that came out last year i i i heard about it from somebody is uh re reviewing it and whatnot and that's why i heard about the movie and then i decided to go ahead and watch it and i love the movie it's it's great like val the uh documentary like about val kilmer another one that i just found out from a random critic that i just uh, uh watched a review and i'm just like oh i gotta i gotta check out this movie and it was a great movie so i think that's like you know, you know more the key part about it not just you know going around tomatoes and being like oh look at the percentage that means it's amazing and you know uh now i go to watch it and it's not amazing and run tomatoes is crap and all that type of stuff right like you know it's 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 either being it's it's being looked on the microscope way too much, even though it's just literally just an aggregator. That's all it is. It's aggregated, and it's I, for me. I don't know. It's just whatever. People use your brain. If you if Batman looks like a movie you want to watch, go watch it. If it doesn't look like a movie you want to watch, don't watch it. And if you're on the fence, then maybe listen to somebody. But I I don't know what we're. Oh, by the way, if you want to listen, we are going to be talking a Batman, uh, spoilerific. Cut talk next Friday, schedule Friday is all Batman, all Batman spoiler talk, top to bottom, four hours long. I'm making this up, but it, just, it's just going to be talking about the Batman uh, on Friday. That we're going to wait till Friday. Uh, it's got to be at least as long as the movie, at least. Yeah, at least. Mr. Four Rez hours. That sounds good. <laughs> Mr. Rez hates all rotten vegetables. There we go. Uh, uh, yeah, imagine if it was four hours. I could probably, you know, we could probably talk about that movie for four hours easily if we wanted to. James says know. as he's wiping his eyes, <laughs> thinking about talking about the movie for three hours. Oh my God. Just like, I'm uh, like sitting uh, in a theater, uh, sitting in a theater with people copying on a commentary. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but Rob, you are going to go see this movie on Wednesday, and you're going to. I'm putting you on the spot now. You're going to do it straight out of the theater. 
initial reaction of the Batman mm-hmm. on video. We're going to post that right away. I'm not going to watch it because you're going to ruin the movie. Say whatever you want on that. I wouldn't spoil it, but say whatever you want. To Wednesday night, you're going to do it straight out of the theater. Hey, Rob here. I saw the Batman and it sucked because Matt Reeves can't direct the trash can. I don't know. Matt Reeves, by the way, I, I, I was really excited when he got hired for this movie and I was extra excited when he was hired to do this movie because he said it was going to take place in year two of Batman, which means that this is, and I've said this before, it's, it's an unofficial sequel. There's already been a Batman one where a year one of Batman, this is year two and the best, one of the best freaking movies ever made best sequel. One of the best sequels ever made is Dawn of the planet of the apes. And that is a sequel to a movie that he didn't make. And that's basically what he's doing now with the Batman. I think that's the greatest, the greatest idea. The best idea is he, we all know, like I said this earlier, we all know Batman. We don't need to watch Martha Wayne die again. Unless of course the word Martha is really, really important. Zack Snyder, but we don't need to see that happen again. We know it happens. I can't wait to watch this movie. Rob, what are you going to say to ruin my life? I well, <laughs> the one thing that just has me fearing it a little bit is I, you know, I don't know anything and I haven't been reading stuff, but I still have a bad feeling that we're if we're not going to see the Wayne's die, we're going to hear a gunshot or we're going to hear something, and you know, I just have a bad feeling that we're going to get There's it. Got, yeah, there will there will be some. I just watched Batman v Superman the other day, and I forgot how like the first seven minutes is just the Wayne's being killed in that one. Mm-hmm. Martha, yeah. They they I, killed, killed two Walking Dead actors, <laughs> and they did. And I will I I I I can't reach my my Batfleck uh, McFarland figure is way up top there. I can't reach it. Mm. But uh, I think Ben Affleck right now is my favorite Batman. So Pattinson, come at me, bro. Come at me, make me a believer. Because <laughs> well, James, speaking of the figures, I went to a, st- a store for the first time in since like January twenty fourth today. And, uh, and uh, I, I went into there and, you know, I know you like collect, collecting these figures. They got now what I saw a figure it's of, uh, the animated, uh, Superman, uh, from there. Yes, and he's, I'm and sure. he's wearing the costume from the black costume from, uh, um, uh, uh, just, just, I, might, I might have to, I might have to transfer you some money for that one. Cause I've never <laughs> seen that one. I do have the Batman animated series and the Batman animated series variant where he's wearing the blue and gray. Cause I'm a big blue gray Batman guy. That's, that's how I, I live. I live for the blue gray Batman. I have, but the, the, the ones that I have though, I have two Batman who laughs and then I have a blue gray Batman. I have, um, Arkham, Arkham, uh, the Arkham game Batman as well. So I just, and I, I just have my favorite Batman's. I don't, I go overboard with them, but not over overboard with them. I only get the Batmans that speak to me, okay? Because there's like 90 of them. So I get the ones that means. And this one, Pattinson, you better live up to this. You so you're, what you're saying is what you're saying is you don't go Goldie Hawn overboard with them. No, I don't. <laughs> I but I bought this Pattinson one. It's actually a it's actually a really nice figure, but I bought this one in the hopes that he's going to be my favorite, one of my favorite Batman, that I'm not going to be disappointed in this because when I bought it, it was cheaper than it is today because I got it right away. Like I pre-ordered this crap. I pre-ordered it and now it's up. It's like, Rob, it is $7 more expensive to get it today than when I bought it. I saved $7, Barry. I am a penny pincher. I I will say this about it. You know, considering this might be our last, like, you know, time to talk about it beforehand, before the movie. No, I, 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 I have, I, I'm very, you know, excited about seeing Robert Pattinson's Batman. And I think he's gonna be a fantastic Batman. However, if there's one thing that concerns me slightly at watching these trailers and stuff like that, I don't know what I'm going to think about Robert Pattinson or, you know, Matt Reeves is Bruce Wayne. Oh, that I can one, tell you. One, I can, tell I, you right, sure I can tell you right now what okay. you're gonna think. I have I've read the prequel novel. This is not a Bruce Wayne that we've gotten before. It's a very different Bruce Wayne. I so he's, he, he's not a playboy. I, I got that out of the trailer. He's so not a playboy. Too. I, I the, when I read the prequel book and then I watched the funeral scene and then I watched I seen I haven't seen a, any of the clips myself. There was a, well. so no, you've been trying to, there was a trailer that dropped, and I watched the trailer. But when the prequel book, it sets up uh, Bruce Wayne very beautifully. It doesn't like Batman. The prequel book, I've got to tell you, he's not Batman until the very, very end of the prequel book. And the prequel book ends with the line, I am the shadows, I am vengeance, I am Batman. 
That's how the prequel novel ends. It ends with him being Batman. Before he's Batman, it goes from like him being 10 years old until until um until he's 20 something in his 20, maybe 27, around 25. I don't know, somewhere around there anyway. He travels the world, he does everything that he needs to do. And when he comes back to Gotham, he finds the Bat Cave. He does Bat Cave stuff. Alfred finds the Bat Cave. Like that's all in the book. You guys know that that's not bad. It explains the eyeshadow on his eyes, why he does that in the prequel novel. He does it to hide his eyes so people won't see his face when he doesn't. That. He's not in the cow. He hasn't figured out Batman yet. He wears a cap. He has army boots. He does all this stuff. He does it all. But it goes very, very deep into Bruce Wayne and how Bruce Wayne is not comfortable being Bruce Wayne because Bruce Wayne is always like, oh, you're Bruce Wayne. And he hate, he can't live with that. He doesn't like people knowing who he is. And in this movie, Bruce Wayne... Batman is is the character. Bruce Wayne is the alter ego, definitely. And Bruce Wayne, he's not comfortable being Bruce Wayne. He's only himself when he is the Batman. So I think you're going to see a very awkward uh, Bruce. Not not like geeky awkward, but like an uncomfortable awkward Bruce Wayne in this movie. Someone who who is unsure of of their surroundings of themselves. But when they're the Batman, they're going to be a confident figure. Who knows what they want and, and and knows what to expect, and that's so that like I, it's not so this Bruce Wayne Rob to your point it's it's going to be I don't know how you're going to feel about it I can't tell you if you're going to like it or not but it's going to be very different from Christian Bale from for it won't it'll be the exact same as George Clooney but it'll be very different from Val Kilmer and very different it'll be the most it'll be the most different Bruce Wayne you've ever seen. Well, so at, at the same time, like even though you're saying that, like. I'm I'm completely cool with that entirely is especially if you know that's where he is now and then if he builds up this Bruce Wayne persona as it goes like you know if you know this movie is as good as it is and Matt Reeves says that he has two other movies possibly planned out that he could do maybe that means that Bruce Wayne will grow into the Bruce Wayne that we know of and he and he starts becoming more of a playboy or you know maybe not entirely much of a playboy because you know but regardless maybe that bruce wayne character will grow as these movies go as well so i th i think as long as it's done well um it could be it, it could be great like you know um e even if they don't have the playboy persona uh figured out there i mean yeah i i, I was only pointing out the only part that i wasn't sure about yet when it comes to robert panson as batman slash bruce wayne I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna be very good as Bruce Wayne, just based on on what I just said. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how he'd be as a playboy if he does grow into the playboy aspect of it. I don't know how he will be, but I think I do think he's gonna be really strong as, as this one. Barry, anything you want to add? Sir? Yeah, now you've got me uh, theorizing and intrigued. <clears throat> I'm curious to know if this is gonna be uh, the Batman version of the Joker. Just the whole yes. psychological yeah. aspect of that. And now looking into it, I'm like, um, I'm thinking about it, I'm like, wow, are they going to kind of go like unbreakable with Bruce Willis? And that's the character dynamic we're going to watch the whole movie is this internal conflict. You can throw in a little bit of the psychology into it and just kind of him going on his own journey in a different way, much like the Joker did. So that to me uh, has perked my interest quite a bit because uh, it is, it's something we've never seen. And just based upon those comments, if that's what they've done, then I can, see why it's going to win awards and why people are really super hyped about it. Cause it is, it's a, that is an awesome way to kind of retell the Batman story in a way we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. So I'm for it. If it's, if it's kind of like a psychology thriller thing um, where he's kind of dealing with these alternate personas of himself and struggling with that. Uh, I think a lot of people can relate to that. And uh, I just think it, again, I've never seen Batman kind of deal with that stuff. So I'm intrigued. I'm glad you shared about that novel that brought in a lot of context. The novel, if you can get your hands on it, it's I got it. I got it on digital on Cabo for ten dollars. I don't know if it's necessarily worth ten dollars. If if you'll feel, I was fine with it. Like I enjoyed it enough for the ten dollars. I really did. I don't know if I can recommend it for that much. It's only like a hundred and pages or so, and it's got a couple of pictures in it, or whatever. But I'm really excited for this movie, as you can tell. Um, and it was, it reminded me of when I was a kid, I used to get like the, the novelization of a movie that I would go see or, or something like that. that and to just kind of get you excited to go see a movie is in a, it accompanies it very well. It kind of sets the stage for it. the Riddler plays a way bigger part in this book as I, than I expected. 
than anticipated. Andrew Edward Nashton, he's not the Riddler yet. Like it's before the Riddler, before Batman, and they're it's kind of like why they become who they become. Yeah, this has me very intrigued about it. I'll probably read as well, but I don't think I'm going to read it before I watch the movie. I'm likely what I'll probably do in getting a recommendation out of it, James. I'll probably uh, watch the movie, then read that, and then probably go see the movie again. I was, well, unless I unless I hate the movie, <laughs> but I don't I don't know if that um, then that, then I probably just won't care. I'll probably just like you know go into emo Bruce Wayne in this movie and just be like eh, the, the 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 whole world is against me and I freaking hate it all. And that's about it. <laughs> that's uh, my biggest concern is yeah. emo Bruce Wayne. Emo Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And and also uh, Barry, you mentioning the awards aspect of it all. I mean, I know that they have awards aspirations for all this. However, I think that if this movie does get nominated for a whole bunch of awards, I think that people should not forget about the fact that if this is nominated for makeup and hairstyling, people should not forget all the people that we have talked to saying it's like, yeah, that penguin, that Oswald Cobblepot, that's... um, Oh shit! I forgot his name now for a second. Colin Farrell. <laughs> Colin Farrell. That's Colin Farrell, and then all people's heads exploding, and that should be enough of a factor to be like, yeah, this movie should probably win best makeup and hairstyling. <laughs> he looks amazing. There's a, they released a clip of him. I'm not gonna say what the clip is, Rob or or, or Barry, because I know you guys are sensitive to all that. You don't want to see that stuff. But I'm so I'll just say they did release a clip. And there's three people talking, and it's just a conversation. There's no spoil, like nothing happens in this clip. Is a spoil. I, I'm guessing it's somewhat in the first quarter of the film, maybe in the first half hour of the film. This is what I'm guessing. And it's in a, it's 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 a it takes place before a scene that we all before something that happens in the trailer that we all know is going to happen, and the scene is dropped. And there's a conversation happening, and then they say, "Hey, Oswald Cobblepot, say something," and he talks. And he speaks, and it's like, and 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 you, it's Colin Farrell, and you have no idea, and that's, it's incredible in that it's the costume, the eyes, and the voice, like those are the three things, right? It's like the, the sorry, the makeup, word, the makeup effects, the 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 eyes. And the voice, and no part watching it, do you even suspect that it's Colin Farrell in in makeup? And it's it, and, and 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 above that, you don't even suspect that it's makeup, right? It's like you just watch the scene, and you're like, holy moly, that's like afterwards. It's afterwards, you're like, that was Colin Farrell <laughs> that was in that shot. Like, it, you know, it, it's it's mind blowing. I, I the one thing that that I do think of though, going into it, is are people going to watch the movie and be like, that's Colin Farrell. That's Colin Farrell. That's Colin. It's like, is that going to take you out of the movie knowing that that's Colin Farrell when he doesn't look like Colin Farrell? You're going to be like, how that's Colin Farrell. Like the whole movie is that what you're going to get? Cause Rob, if you say that and you sit beside me at any point, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> <laughs> now I want, now I kind of want to do it to be honest. <laughs> <laughs>